They said it was impossible, but I did it. I successfully created a PDF the size of Michigan. Let me show you how I created it, and along the way, we'll learn a bit about the inner workings of PDFs. I learned about this possibility from an article by Alex Chan about creating a PDF larger than Germany. But I live in Michigan, not Germany, so obviously I need to see if it worked for Michigan. If we looked at the Wikipedia page for PDF, we see this. Page dimensions are not limited by the format itself. However, Adobe Acrobat imposes a limit of 15 million by 15 million inches. That means technically a PDF could be the size of North America. But let's focus on the 15 million inches thing. Here's what it would look like on top of the state of Michigan. But is it actually possible to create a PDF I can open in Adobe Acrobat that is 15 million by 15 million inches? I don't know of any PDF creator that can create files of that size, so we're gonna have to hand code it. Yes, it is possible to hand code a PDF, though I really don't recommend it. First, let's look at the code of a normally created PDF. So I just opened up a PDF in a text editor, and you can see it's very hard to understand. It would be almost impossible to create one like this by hand, but we can create a simpler one. Let me explain all the main components of a simple hand-coded PDF file. So there are four main parts, the header, the body, the cross-reference table, and the trailer. Now, PDFs can do so many different things, but like I said, this is gonna be a pretty basic one. So first we're just going to put the header. The PDF-1.3 just specifies the PDF version the document conforms to, which is 1.3. And then we are going to need the first part of the body. And this is going to be a catalog object. So the body is going to contain a bunch of objects that define the document structure and content. And each object is numbered and can reference other uh, objects. So this is number one. So the one zero object denotes the start of the object number one with the generation number zero. And then we have this dictionary object, which is going to specify the type of the object, in this case, a catalog, which is the root of the document's object tree. And then here's a reference to another object that contains the document's page tree. And then we always end with end object. So this is the pages object, which is a page tree node, which defines the structure for the document's pages. And then we got this array here, which contains references to the page objects and the other tree nodes. And they all have to end with end object. Okay, now it's getting interesting. We have the page object, and then we have, this just specifies the parent page tree node of this page. And then we have the media box. This is going to define the boundaries of the physical page in points. So it's going to be a rectangle. It's going to start at coordinate zero, zero on the bottom left. And then this is the top right corner. So we'll be coming back to this. We'll be using this later. Then we are going to specify the resources like fonts. Uh, if we're gonna have text, we need a font. And this is going to be what's required to render the page. And then the contents, which is a content stream object, object number four, that contains the instructions for rendering the page. Okay, and now we got a content stream. So we have the stream and the in stream, and that's going to contain the instructions for rendering the page. And then we have BT for begin text and ET for end text. So here's where we're going to set the text font. And these are going to be the coordinates of the text. And you can probably see what the text says in this PDF. Next, we have the font dictionary. So we're going to specify the base font is Helvetica. And we're done with the objects, so we have the cross-reference table. This lists each object's byte offset within the file, allowing readers to quickly find and access the objects. Now, this is very hard to make by hand. I had to actually use ChatGPT to come up with the byte offsets of each element. And the final part is the trailer. And then we have just end of file. So let's try actually opening this in Acrobat Reader. And it works, we have a PDF that says, please subscribe. So now that we can create a PDF by hand, can we create one the size of Michigan? Let's go back to the media box that I was talking about earlier. Every page can be a different size and the media box is where the size is specified. So here we see it's 612 by 792 units. The default unit size is one over 72. So if we do 612 divided by 72, we get 8.5. And if we do 792 divided by 72, we get 11. And if we go into the document properties in Acrobat Reader, we see 8.5 times 11 inches, which is just what we calculated. 
So what happens if we change these to, let's say 50,000 by 50,000? If I try opening it again, the dimensions of this page are out of range. Page content might be truncated. That's because the max allowed in Acrobat is 14,400. And that changes this to 200 by 200 inches. That's definitely still smaller than Michigan. If the max is 14,400, how do we get this to be as big as Michigan? Well, the max units is 14,400, but we can increase the unit size. By default, it's one over 72, but we can add a user unit value to increase the size. So now we are increasing it, the size to five instead of 172 or one over 72. So if you open the file again and go to document properties, we now see we are 1000 inches by 1000 inches. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The max value of the user units is 75,000. So I'll reopen the PDF. If I check the properties, we did it. 15 million by 15 million inches, which is 381 kilometers by 381 kilometers. That's how big this square is on top of Michigan. We made a PDF the size of Michigan. Now we just have to figure out a way to print a PDF this big. Thanks for watching.